Los Angeles. In Los Angeles? Now, if things were different, this is a little Soviet child. They might play together. They should play together. And I hope maybe someday they uh -huh. will grow up together. Well, I would hope so, too. This little boy right here, I didn't bring his picture, but he's one of the local basketball player sons. And uh, this Local is meaning? Boise local. Boise. That's <laughs> fine. That's fine. Um, this was taken on his first birthday. And I also did um, a square of a little Soviet boy. And this square was really, really special for me. This one? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. This oh, is him a on darling, a motorbike. Darling boy. Yes. And translating this photograph into stitchery made me have to stare at this for a good long time. And I just fell in love with this little well, guy. Well, you should. It's easy to do. <laughs> yeah. So what this meant to me was that our children are so alike and it's so special to have them here face to face next to each other. And, and I hope that we will be also. Mm -hmm. We're so happy well, to meet with you I'm in this historic Thank place. You. It was our dream when we created this quilt that it could be here. We feel as if, and I'm sure you do as well, that the world is terribly threatened. And kids everywhere feel as if part of their future hinges on negotiation. And we feel, if we have given birth to life, that it should continue and we should never let go of it. And if there's anything we can do to add wisdom and confidence to the world, we say it through our quilts, to cr try to create a better day for children so that they too will have their chance to address the future and its dreams? My own personal view is that we are nowhere near war. Uh, that as a matter of fact, uh, you've had the longest period of peace in modern European history since the end of the Second World War. And we ought to understand that. And though we want to get rid of the nuclear armaments, I think the existence of those armaments, we should understand, has proved a deterrent so that war becomes unthinkable because we have these nuclear weapons. So I wouldn't get too uh, upset about prospects. Uh, I think governments understand now increasingly, I hope they do, uh, that uh, we must do everything we can to try to establish peace between us. But, Ambassador, I think what we need to see is some of those weapons stridently, step by step, dismantled for peaceful uses, redirected. That's the American position. And we need to do yeah. that. And until that begins to happen on a fairly fluid scale, no, we won't be satisfied. I feel almost as if we're living on the brink of death with all of this overkill. Yeah, but it's that which I wanted to address, because we're not living on the brink of death. We have a definite objective, which is to get rid of the armaments. And this is the American position in these negotiations. And this is what we're trying to do in these negotiations. But I just don't feel we should believe that we're somehow on the brink of some utter catastrophe, because we are not, and I repeat, we have had a very long period of peace. We want it to be a permanent peace, which means we have to deal with the problems that create tensions between us. Um, and these problems have to be dealt with. What is so important for our friends and the citizens back home to know is that Soviet negotiators, as well as American negotiators, could see this quilt. But we would like to ask you if this could be in the chambers here, I understand the closing session is tomorrow. Could it be here in the chambers for an hour or two hours so that we know that both the Soviet negotiator and yourself have seen it? I'll be glad to would ask Would you them. be willing? I'll be oh, glad to ask that them. That would be just See wonderful. What they think about it, yes. We appreciate that very much. Why don't you try to make an effort to see the Soviet? We have, we have already. Our dream is that you yes. are together in front of it. We yeah. are meeting with them on Thursday. Oh, are you good? But it is important for us to know that yeah. Both of you saw it in the same room. Well, I'll ask them about it. That would be great. That's wonderful. Without thank you for coming. Thank, thank you very much. Thank yes. you, Ambassador, right. so much. Good. Bye. Thank you for your thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you. I didn't believe him. Well, I think he gave us his regular line. I just saw some breakthrough in his body language a few times. He let down. He says he's going to
do it. He's going to put his best foot into it and really go for, for having it exhibited there. After all, he just finished saying, uh, well, the, that's the American position. Right. Mm -hmm. I saw a really uh, sympathetic look on his Good face lunch. several times. That was there's only really not real. diplomatic, you mean? Yes, I mean like a real human being. <laughs> Ambassador Natalia yeah. Dolga Palova is supposed to be here mm -hmm. for our sharing with you of this quilt. And we are very concerned that she's not here because she has not arrived yet. <laughs> she is supposed to arrive tomorrow. I see. Because this quilt, mm -hmm. sir, is so much the hearts and people of the mothers in the Soviet Union and the United States. And we feel terribly distressed that she's not here right now, and we hope that you understand this. But I think the most important thing that you are here, and you can <laughs> communicate to me what you would like to. But do you understand yes, this? Yes, yes, I it? understand it. Can we set up the quilt right now? Do you, well, do you have time? You must see it. Oh, Children from your like, country and our yes. country, fine. We'll set it up right now. <laughs> nice. And all those faces here, are faces that uh, do reflect real people. Children. Yes. These are real children. portraits mm -hmm. of Soviet children and of American, American children. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. And it took about a thousand hours. Uh, yeah. I understand that's a Russian girl. Yeah. Yes. yes. Soviet girl. Yeah, in fact. Yes. Yeah. You see, General Starodubov uh, has a granddaughter. And so it's very much like, like her? yeah, her. Uh -huh. Yes, very well, maybe girls. her. <laughs> <laughs> and with every stitch, sir, it is a labor of love, yeah. and our desire to be in great accord, people to people. And I hope you understand that. Yes, oh and I appreciate you coming here. And uh, we are trying hard, in fact, to reach an agreement that would make it possible to exclude the arms race in space and to get an end to the arms race on Earth. Although there are no great results that we can boast of, we still think that it's our duty, it's uh, our obligation to all the women and to all the men on Earth to follow the line to bring about uh, results that would make it possible to make our life on this small planet more safe. And that's why we are here. That's why we are talking here. Thank you. And I hope that together with the support of all the women on Earth, we maybe can just produce some results. <laughs> let's hope so. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let's see. Oh, you're Mr. Kordachev. I had it written the other way. Hi, good morning. How you doing? Okay, Swiss please go TV. ahead. I'm sorry, Swiss TV's not on the pool today. It's ARD, German TV. Mr. Schroeder, why was the quill after we thought it would, we were told it would hang in with the negotiators, why was it moved out to the elevators? Well, you were told that he would bring it up with Ambassador Karpov and that we would uh -huh. see what we could do. He brought it up with Ambassador Karpov, and based on that discussion, we decided that we'd put it where it is, which is where people will see it when they come off the elevator. Okay, our understanding on the phone with the Soviet mission at the, concurrently was that it was, yes. Well, I don't know to whom you spoke to at the Soviet mission, I'm, and this is the best we could do. Thank you. Okay. It's in the elevator hall. It's not, it's not It's not. in the room with the negotiators, actually. They've moved it out to the elevator. Apparently, what we said with Karpov gave us a yes at the Soviet mission, but he said that they spoke to the Soviets and that that's as close as they could get was in the elevator area, and he said it's the best we can do, and it's out there. You know, they'll both walk by it, and everybody will see it. Uh, at least that was the minimum hope we had, but at least it's there.
feel disappointed that it isn't going to be right in physically with the negotiators when they're going over their information and hashing it all out because I kind of feel like it's been pushed aside and it's easier to ignore that way and it's hard to ignore it when it's right there and it's it's brilliant colors and the children's faces if it's right there in the meeting with them it's sort of going to distract them or my feelings are that it would be a little bit distracting and have to speak to them but it's up there that far well i think there's a certain story here simply by the fact that they reduced it to where it's hanging there's a their minds are, are of that. They are not ready for this message yet. And it's, it just means that it's a long, hard struggle. We've got a lot to do yet. You know, I feel so much of the power of what we've done. A great disappointment that the quilt was not in the negotiation room. We worked for that, Robin. All those women back home really work for that. You can't just dwell on the fact that it's not right there in the room because it's, they have to walk right by it. You know, they have to shoulder right by it, all of them together. I want it in the room. It's more than it not being in the building. It's more than it being stuck on the first floor. It's there. You know, the quilt, I understand that message. The quilt speaks truth to power. It also transcends that line because it isn't just for them, it's for all the people that gathered hope out of working on that and pride out of the fact that they were part of a cooperative project with Soviet women, where previously they had believed it wasn't possible to do anything with Soviet women, that you do it against. A big part of the experience in Geneva was working together as a group, encouraging each other's uh, growth and dealing with conflict and being good communicators it all what we were what we were trying to manage uh, a worldwide symbol for it all boils down to how one individual gets along with another one you know and and we got we got to deal with it on both levels It's just like, as a runner, you run, and you run, and it's the process of running. It's not just winning. And I can see the stitched stitches just going along like a jogger. And it's the process of these stitches that truly affect people and change people. And for me, I can't imagine what my life was. I just can't imagine what my life was before the Quilt Project. Oh, yes. It's very naive to think that you can stop nuclear war. It's very naive to think that you can change the world and stop the destruction that we might all be facing. It's very naive, yet you have to do it. It's been a lot of work, but at the same time, it's given my children a sense of hope. It's given me a sense of hope, and it's been a lot of fun. When we sit down and make a quilt with thousands of tiny stitches, I feel it's a real act of faith in the future, in our ability to create the future. <laughs>